machine accept that string? No way to do it. No way. That problem is not recursive. It's not decidable. It's complement. You know, the set of things that you don't accept themselves, that's not even recursively enumerable. That's this thing. So this is not even recursively enumerable. And it's complement the set that do accept itself. That's undecidable. But it is recursively enumerable. The set of things that do accept the machine accepts the string, you can just simulate it. And if it accepts it, sooner or later you'll get the answer yes. So you can get the answer yes when the answer is yes, you just won't get the answer no when the answer is no. But this one where you switch the thing around to its complement, this one you can't even say yes to. This one is not recursively enumerable. So we've got an example of our first set that's undecidable. What we want to do from here is kind of move it to problems that are a little more practical. Take this thing, which is undecidable, and reduce it to other problems. So we're going to do a few reductions of that sort. And the reduction that we'd really love to do, but it's just too tedious and I'm not going to do it, it's to show that this halting Turing machine problem reduces to PCP. The PCP problem, you guys remember that problem? You're given a set of strings like this, like 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1. 0, 10, and then maybe 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. And the question is, can you make a sequence of these in some order where when you concatenate it together, you get the same string as the same sequence on the other side? Yes or no? Can you do it or not? And that problem, I told you, was undecidable. Do you know how to prove that's undecidable? It's a tedious proof, but at least I'll give you the, the just most general picture, just to give you a general sense. Here's how you show that that's undecidable. You show that if somebody could solve this problem in general, if somebody could take a long list of binary strings and tell you whether you could put them together in such a way so that the left side was the same as the right side, if somebody could do that, let's say you guys can do it. You know a way. It's a secret ADU PCP algorithm. It sits in the back of the room. If you knew a way, then I could figure out how to solve the halting problem. Well, how would I do that? Well, presumably, the halting problem gives me an M and an X, a machine and an input string. Somehow, I would take that machine and the input string and construct a long list of zeros and ones strings and hand them to you. And I'd say, go run this on the PCP machine. And you'd run it, you'd tell me yes or no, and presumably, I would construct it in such a careful way so that if you told me yes, this machine would accept x. And if you told me no, this machine would not accept x. I would connect the machine and x to a list of strings so that the solution of those strings on the PCP was the same exact answer to the solution to whether M accepted X. Now how do you do that? It's such a mess. You have to take the machine, you have to take the input, and you've got to decide exactly on what those strings should be. Now intuitively, do you know what those strings end up being? They end up being pieces of a configuration of a computation of the machine on this string. Remember what a configuration is? It's a picture of the machine. And then if you go to the next step, you get another configuration, another picture of the machine. If there's a way to connect those together, each string might represent a possible configuration. They can connect together if one can get to the other. If you can connect those together so that this side equals this side, then there turns out to be a way to get to an accepting state on this string using this machine. And if there's no way to do it, then there's no way. You really carefully make those strings to correspond to the machine and the string. Now the how and the details is a little gruesome. And it's described in very detail in the book. I mean, he really goes through it. Gives you the big picture and the details. But I don't know. I just don't think it's really worth doing as a regular lecture. It's just tedious, and I don't think you'll get it sitting through it in a lecture. If you stared at it for five or six hours, and then I went through it, you'd probably get it. But then you'd probably get it even if I wouldn't go through it. So I'm not sure how much going through this in a lecture really helps the details. So, so I'm not sure I want to do it. But, but maybe I'll do a little piece of it or something. There is this little stage. In this, re in this reduction from here to here, there's actually a two-stage problem. You actually reduce it to a problem that's a little bit simpler than PCP, or seems like it's simpler. It's a problem just like PCP, but you have to start with the first string in your sequence. Okay, if I give you PCP and ask the same question, but I also insist that you have to start with the first string. That's what MPCP is. Now, why is that closer to the halting problem? 
Why do you think you'll have an easier time taking a machine and a string and connecting it to a problem where you have to start with the first string than just a problem where you could start anywhere? Because you do have to start in a particular start state. Because you have to start in the start state, in the initial configuration. And the initial configuration ends up being somewhat akin to this first string. So I would love to be able to deal with my target being something where I have to start with the first string. So in order to do that, you're working with a different problem. And maybe that problem is hard, you know, but, but it seems like it might be easier than the general PCP. So I can show you tomorrow, and it's kind of an easy proof, that if you can solve that problem where you start with the first string all the time, then you could solve the general problem too. That it's actually no easier. It's just as hard as the general problem. And that gives the author the ability to narrow his target to something more uh, attainable. And that's really what, what the author does. So we can show this reduction. We can show the reductions from PCP to all the grammar questions. And we're also going to show reductions from this halting problem to all these other interesting things you'd like to know about Turing machines. Anything you want to know about Turing machine, forget it. Here's a Turing machine. Does it accept a regular language? In other words, is the language it accepts the same as some finite state machine? Yes or no? No way to decide. Here's a Turing machine. Does it accept absolutely nothing? Is its language empty? No way to decide. Does it accept everything? No way to decide. All those questions that are undecidable are reductions directly from the halting problem. If you could solve any of them, you could determine whether a machine halts on a given input. And I'm going to explain that connection. That connection is not obvious, and your brains are too uh, full for one day to do it. But that's what we'll do yesterday. We'll talk about reduction. <laughs> yesterday? <laughs> I'm losing it. Well, that's what we'll do tomorrow. We'll talk about reductions from the halting problem and from MPCP to PCP. When we're done with reductions, we're shifting over to computational complexity, talking about P, N, P, P space, and hierarchies of how long it takes to really do things that you can do. No more stuff about things you can't do after that. All right, let's quit.